I hope uh, you are well. Um, also, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from my side. My name is Fabian Burkhardt. I'm working in the Energy Data Center in the annual energy statistics team. And among other topics, I am working on the renewable and waste fuel. Without further ado, I'm going to start with the presentation that will also be followed by some exercises later on, um, guided um, by myself and my colleague Ricardo. Yeah, the presentation is divided into three different parts. In the first one, I will talk about uh, the key renewable trends worldwide. And then I will go over to some key statistics concepts specific for renewables. And lastly, I will go over the structure of the renewables and the waste questionnaire. Let's start uh, with a quick question uh, to make this session as interactive as possible. I encourage you to go to Menti, as you have previously done already in the exercises and also in the beginning of uh, the session. Um, the code is 44389950, and you can answer the question that is um can be seen here. Which renewable energy do you think takes the largest portion in total energy supply in the world? I really encourage you to take part. Um, this makes you participate and also I'm very eager to learn about your opinion about that. We can already see some answers dropping in. Hydro is so far the clear leader with around 20 votes. Gonna wait for some more. We have many participants in the room. There are also some votes for solid biofuels, some for uh, just one for PV, but I guess that we definitely have a clear winner for hydro with now, yeah, 33 votes. Um, yeah, the correct answer is solid biofuels. And uh, I'm gonna explain also why this is the case in uh, the next slide. It is very easy to be, yeah, well, to mistake that. Uh, in this slide, you can see the total energy supply of um, the world. Um, in total on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, um, bit zoomed in of the renewable uh, for the year 2020. And indeed, the largest portion of renewables, if you have a look on the right-hand side, was biofuels and waste. And uh, the largest component of this was solid biofuels. When we talk about renewables, the first thing that may come to your mind are renewable electricity services, such as yeah, solar PV, wind power, or hydro. But the renewable product most used in the world is still biomass that is mainly converted into heat, um, which is uh, largely consumed in the, in the developing countries for yeah, heating and cooking purposes. And this is very important to remember. As you can see from this slide, that there are several energy products that have increased greatly in the last three decades. It's good to see that the renewable pace is slightly higher than the total energy supply rate, which is around yeah 1.66%. And this is mainly due to favorable policies for renewables, especially for, at the moment, solar PV and wind. But as we've previously seen, the share in total energy supply is still around 15% and it's necessary that renewables contribution grow faster since, yeah, well, you're all aware of that, renewables are the key for decommunization of the energy sector. Looking at uh, some more recent trends on, on this slide, you can see the evolution of renewable energy supply between 2019 and 2020 in the OECD area. The total energy supply from renewables continued to grow, um, but at a lower pace um, when compared to previous years. 
The total, uh, in particular, the wind energy slowed down, mostly due, due to uh, low wind speed in Northern Europe, and also hydro generation decreased compared to 2020, and it was the lowest rate since 2001. <clears throat> This is mainly because of severe droughts are partic particularly significant in the US and Turkey. However, after the 2020 drop uh, due to widespread lockdowns, liquid biofuels consumptions, for instance, bounced back in most of the countries. Also, um, it is very obvious that solar PV in the OECD area continued its rapid growth in almost all the countries reaching an increase of more than 50% uh, compared to 2020 and 2021. In the chart on the left-hand side on this slide, uh, you can see the share of renewables uh, around the world, and you can clearly see that Africa has the largest share with around 50%. Here we get actually back to what I've said about solid biofuels and what I've been asking you in Nemanti, um, that solid biofuel use in the global south and in developing country is very high. Indeed, the renewable product most used in Africa and in other regions except the OCD is biomass, and this is mostly due to a rather traditional way um, of the usage of biomass that principally means burning the fuel um, rather inefficiently in small appliances. In OECD countries, biomass is less used and generally in a more, yeah, let's say a modern way, for example, for producing electricity and or heat. Still in the OECD, uh, which you can see the share is one of the lowest, the renewable development has been significant in the last years, especially to generate electricity. Uh, but there are energy intensive final consumption sectors, such as the transport sector, that are still heavily reliant on fossil fuels. Concerning the sectoral consumption on the right hand side, on the right hand side of the slide, uh, again, the green slice is mainly con composed of the traditional use of biomass and the electricity plants um, slice is what we should pursue to expand since you would like to electrify the final consumption sector as much as possible and thus to, to decarbonize this sector. This already leads me to the final slide of this first section where you can see the world electricity production in which renewables represent around 28%. Within renewables, hydro is now the most widespread, and thus uh, I can give you a point for that. Uh, hydro is the most widespread source for electricity production within renewables. Solar PV and wind are uh, the two that have grown faster in the last years, posing new challenges, since they are intermittent and the generation, generation does not always match the demand. Yeah, I invite you to follow the strategies proposed by the agency uh, to face these challenges. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the key concept section now. Already in the second part of the presentation, uh, you can see here on this slide the classification uh, of the renewables and waste. It is classified into four different groups. And this classification is based on the form of primary energy considered from a statistical point of view, which is very important, and how this form can be converted into one anana. I expl explain this starting from the first group, um, which is electricity only. If you consider wind or hydro, the first form of energy that is generated is mechanical energy, for example, from the rotation of a wind turbine, uh, which is then converted into electricity. From a st statistical point of view, we consider electricity as the primary form of energy, since the mechanical energy in almost all cases is directly converted into electricity. And the mecha mechanical energy would not be of 
yeah, interest from a statistical point of view, since we since electricity is the first common marketable commodity that is generated. Coming to the second and fourth group, the primary form is heat. For the second group, the production is considered in the form of heat, because in this case, there are two possible outlets, heat that can be directly used, for example, using geothermal heat for district heating, or heat that can be used to generate electricity, Yeah, for instance, in a solar thermal power plant. Coming to the fourth group, this includes heat extracted from the environment and used in heat pumps. And in this case, this is not possible to co convert it into electricity. So it is uh, separated in this category. In the third group, we have combustible fuels. Um, so the primary form of energy, we consider the fuels themselves and is the only form that can be stored within the renewables. On this slide, uh, you can see the solid biofuels classification. So zooming in into solid biofuels, on the center of the slide, you can see the definition. And yeah, they are all considered primary products here. The, the products that you can see here, except charcoal, which is uh, derived from the carbonization of wood. There might be some products on the slide that need some explanations. I will pick uh, yeah, one or two of them. One of them uh, I will talk about is black liquor on the left-hand side, which is a byproduct of the paper manufacturing process. It is actually liquid, but it is conventionally considered within the solar biofuels because its composition and use uh, of the substance is more similar to solid than conventional liquid biofuels. Then we also have the renewable industrial waste, that is solid organic matter on the right bottom. Um, it is considered within the solid biofuels. The most common product of it is the natural rubber components of waste tires. If you're still not sure if a product can be considered solid biofuels or industrial waste, feel free to reach out to us and we will talk and discuss about it. To engage you again a bit, um, I have on this slide another Menti question. Feel free to go to menti.com again with the code that is provided on the slide 44389950 and answer the question here again. I want to know your opinion about what is an example of how wood is used in energy statistics. We have four different answers this time as material for making furniture, burning for home heating, wood residues burned in a landfill, landfill or none of these. I hope the ment is working. Yeah, now I can see the first answers dropping in. Give you a bit more time. Okay, the clear winner, I guess. Uh, we don't need to wait anymore. Thank you for all all the answers. I uh, really like to see that m many of you uh, are, t are participating here. Um, yeah, the, the correct answer is indeed burning for home heating. Uh, it is clearly an energy purpose uh, that we can report in the residential sector of the final consumption. Let's uh, um, shortly talk about why not the others. Furniture is non-energy use um, and wood residues burn in landfill. From what is written, you can't deduce that the energy generated from, from it is used somehow and the material could be burned just to reduce its volume. Basically only, for instance, ash remains and this is not energy use and none of these um, is not correct either. Thank you. Okay.
let's uh, go to the statistics of solid biofuels and biogases. Uh, now that I've given you an overview of the renewable products, let me clarify the statistical boundaries for some of them according to the international rec recommendations. Regarding biofuels, um, actually most of them are made from other sources. For, a, for example, landfill gas originates from waste in landfills and by gas from sugarcane, as you can hear see on the slide. But we assume that landfill gas and by gas are the primary products to be consistent with the international definitions, IRIS, and also because if we don't, it can lead to an exp exponential amount of work in data collection. Having said that, it is likely that in the future, some new transformation flows will be collected, for example, gasification or pyrolysis processes that transform solid biofuels into gaseous biofuels. At the moment, however, we consider primary energy product um, the gas that is produced. Let's go over to this slide where you can see a lot of numbers and I want to explain you and to see how liquid biofuels are reported in a renewable questionnaire compared to the oil questionnaire, because often we can see some um, yeah, difficulties in the reporting. In a renewable one, uh, we report only the pure liquid biofuels. This means that you don't have to report the portion of biofuels blended with oil products. We report blended products in the oil questionnaire. The example which you can see here is a country that produces 1,000 kilotons of diesel containing 10% of biodiesel. Half of this product is exported and the other half is used in road transport. So 100 kilotons of biodiesel are produced in the country and are reported in a renewable production of biodiesel. But the other flows, trade and final consumption, concerning the blended products, Therefore, they are reported only in the oil questionnaire. In the renewable balance, you report the production of biodiesel, and then in transformation sector, this amount will be reported under the flow for blending with diesel and other oil products. In this way, pure liquid biofuels are transferred to blended products. This concept now that I've introduced also applies to biogases, when biogases are blended with natural gas. Also, this is very important to understand because um, this is one of the peculiarities of the renewables questionnaire. Let's go to the next slide where we can, sorry, where you can already see uh, the renewable data sources uh, similar to the one uh, from the oil um, um, yeah, presentation. Um, for the supply side, data can be collected from energy producers, importers, exporters, while for the demand side, data can be collected from households, enterprises, and so on. Data can be collected through surveys or using administrative data, but very often an integrated approach is adopted that means using yeah, different ways of collecting data and making estimations where needed in order to get the values for all the energy products and flows that we need. This is totally fine. Just keep in mind the methodology should be kept the same or if there are some yeah, changes in methodologies, this should also be reported. Let's have a closer look at the different types of data collection, surveys and yeah, automatic transfer of data is the best way to collect data direct directly. However, especially surveys in, in the conventional manner, are usually time-consuming and expensive. So it's difficult to carry them out every year. What is generally done here is uh, that a survey is made every two or three years, and the estimations are consequently made for the coming years. Concerning the administrative data, as a second point, they are generally data collected from governmental bodies, in response to legislation, policies, regulations. These are more economical 
but it's necessary to pay attention to the products and definitions and inconsistencies to do uh, yeah, the lack of expertise or to the lack of discrepancies and definitions in the data. Then you can also get measured data. And finally, in absence of data sources, you can make estimations. Here's an example for solar PV in case you need electricity generation, but you have only information on yeah, capacity installed. Installed, You can, for instance, calculate a generation assuming a capacity factor, which is for solar PV around 12 and 15%. Now, um, already before moving to the last part, uh, this slide um, shows you an overview of the different uh, sources and uh, different um, services that we provide um, by the agency. I'll let them explore by yourself. Uh, the presentation is available for you. Coming to the last part now to the questionnaire. Um, on this slide, you can see the structure of the questionnaire. Uh, you can see six tables, sometimes they are split up by A and B. Even if you don't use it, the questionnaire and if you don't have to submit it, it can still be used for, for cross-checks um, for the products and flows that we collect with what you have in your database. There are different checks, automatic sums that you can adapt for your data validation. It can be useful thus for reference. Coming now to the first table. The first table is used to report the cross electricity and heat production. As you can imagine, maybe these values should be consistent with the electricity questionnaire, even though here we collect more details for the renewable products. The table is divided into two parts. Let's see here. The cross electricity production reported in gigawatt hours and the heat production reported in terajoule. The re uh, producers are classified as key and auto producer. I think you may know this. These are then further divided into electricity only plants, combined heat and power plants, and heat only plants. Regarding the heat reporting, all heat production from main activity producer plants should be reported, while in case of auto producers, only heat sold to third parties should be reported. Also, this is very important to keep in mind because here uh, we can sometimes see some difficulties again. Jumping to the table 2A, it is definitely the largest table with 13 energy products listed across the top and 60 flows. Regarding the definition of energy products, I think that you already know the that we follow the international recommendations on energy statistics. So all uh, recommendations and all uh, definitions are deducted from that. Most products are reported in Terrajul on a net calorific basis, except for charcoal and liquid biofuels, which are reported in kilotons. If you see the rows, this is broken up into supply, transformation, uh, energy sector, and final energy consumption, um, which can be seen here. It's very small, but uh, it is broken up in these uh, different sectors. Final energy consumption is then divided into industry, transport, and other sectors, which include residential, agriculture, and so on. In case of energy sector and final energy consumption, the flow should be reported according to the international standard industrial classification. Now, coming to table 3A, this table is smaller and has four parts. It contains very important information used to verify the information entered in other tables. The first part collects data on maximum electricity, electrical capacity of the renewable plants. If the electricity generation, for instance, is reported in table one, then the capacity should also be reported here by type and size, and this is reported in megawatts. Concerning solar collector surface, it is reported in thousand square meters. And let me specify really that this does not include uh, solar PV surface nor sol solar thermal power collector surface, CSP. It's only about solar thermal collector mainly used in the residential sector to heat 
the water. Then we also have the production capacity of liquid biofuels that is reported in kilotons per year. And finally, we collect also the average net calorific value of the various liquid biofuels and charcoal, which you can see on the bottom right. The next table, table four, gives a detailed breakdown of production of solid biofuels and biogases. For example, solid biofuel is divided into fuel wood, black liquor, bagasse, animal waste, other vegetable materials and residues, and also industrial waste, the renewable part of industrial waste. These figures should all be reported in teratools. The important thing is that the total amount of production of solid biofuels in table four should match the number reported in indigenous production of solid biofuels on table two. Again, the same principle applies to the biogases. Coming to slide five and uh, to table six and five, uh, which is um, dedicated for imports by country of origin and also for export of country by destination. At the moment, the products concerned are liquid biofuels and wood pellet, since they are yeah, just very easy, the most traded commodities, but there could be changes in the future. For now, those two are reported. It's a bit easier, and, and now I want to yeah, almost end uh, with a schematic overview of the relationships between the renewables questionnaire and other uh, annual questionnaires. Uh, especially the renewable questionnaire has a strong relationship with the electricity questionnaire and, as pointed out, for oil for liquid biofuels. As you can see, there are many, many links uh, in tables which we then use to yeah, validate the data. Here are, to yeah, conclude the presentation, a few helpful links and some documents that could be of interest for you. I will let them again explore by yourselves. The presentation is available to you. Here are our mail addresses that you can see on the bottom. Uh, which you can always um, yeah, reach out to. It's renewable, aq at iea.org or wet at iea.org. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we are happy to answer 